Bismillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. My dear wonderful people, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This is your brother Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa. The other day I told you a story of the people of Saturday and why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed them into monkeys. And we learned from their lesson what it is that we shouldn't do so that Allah doesn't turn us into behavior like he did turn them. Today in Surah Al-Baqarah, we are again going to spend some time with the children of Israel. And as I said many times that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to us in Al-Quran through the stories of the children of Israel. For example, if you are going to cross the street with your child and you tell him a story of a child that one day crossed the street and didn't look right and left and a car hit him and he died. What you actually are telling your child is that my child, watch out, don't resemble the other child. Don't do as he did. Otherwise, you're going to get what he got. Very simple. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us many stories here about the children of Israel. How they behaved in Al-Quran and how they behaved in Surah Al-Baqarah specifically. Surah Al-Baqarah, when it was revealed as a contextual, it was number 87. But we find it in Al-Quran number 2. Because if you can apply Surah Al-Baqarah into your life, the rest of the Quran will be easy. So Surah Al-Baqarah is not a light duty. Once you learn it and you find what it is in it and you apply it, it will change your life. And the reason shaitan cannot spend a night where it is recited because Surah Al-Baqarah is the complete and utterly blind obedience to Allah. And a shaitan cannot live with that. Tonight, I want to spend some time with the children of Israel and the story of Al-Baqarah itself. Why is this surah been named Al-Baqarah, the cow, or the haven as they want to fancy it? One day, at the time of the children of Israel, there was something where magic was again prominent. And this is a trait in the children of Israel until today. They were very good at magic. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted again to teach them a lesson that it don't matter how much they are good in magic, they cannot outdo their creator. One day the children of Israel woke up in the morning to find a dead corpse in one of their cities. The man in the city is unknown to them. Who is this person? And now the other city, a nearby city, who were looking for their disappeared man, came to this town and they found that their man who disappeared from them is actually found in this city and he is murdered. Obviously in those days, the accusation goes to the town where they found the dead person. You killed them. They said, no, we didn't kill him. Who is this person? We don't even know who that is. They said, you kill him. They say, look, before getting into this debate and this argument, let's go to the Prophet of Allah, Musa alayhi salam, and then ask him about it all, what it is that it is here. Allah says in the Quran, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأَمُرُكُمْ أَنْ تَذْبَحُوا بَقَرَةً So the children went to Musa alayhi salam and they gave him the story, what happened. Now they were expecting some sort of an answer. Yet they got surprised by what Musa said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأَمُرُكُمْ أَنْ تَذْبَحُوا بَقَرَةً Allah commands you that you slaughter a cow. Now what is the relationship? We are asking you about a dead a murder and you're telling us to slaughter a cow? That did not register well with the children of Israel. Then they said to him, قالوا, huzwa? Are you making fun of us by any trick? We're asking you about murder and you're telling us a cow. What kind of a joke is this? Musa salam قال, أعوذ بالله أن أكون من الجاهلين. Now in the English horrible, miserable translation, they translate the term jahilin as ignorant. This is not, it doesn't befit the majesty of Musa alayhi salam, he is one of the noblest prophets. Ulil Azm. What huna, what al jahilin means huna, al zalimin, i.e., I do not transgress by telling you something that Allah has not commanded me. He said, I seek refuge in Allah that I be of the oppressors. I don't oppress you. You asked for this, it's not of my thinking. Not the ignorant. Look at that translation. In any case, Qalu. They didn't want to slaughter a cow. And I will tell you later why they didn't want to slaughter the cow. Now, 
in normal questions, if someone tells you slaughter a cow, the question should be what kind of cows, not what is a cow. Because the children of Israel, they didn't say man here, man للعاقل. They say ma, what it is a cow. Musa alayhi salam, subhanallah, again, revelation comes to him. قال, Musa alayhi salam, إنه, i.e. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, إنها بقرة لا ثارض ولا بكر عوان بين ذلك. So this cow here is not an old cow and it's not a virgin young cow. It is in between these two, like a medium age cow. Musa alayhi salam told them, listen to me and do as commanded. Don't argue. The children of Israel went again and instead of slaughtering that middle-aged cow, came back to him. And they said, Ya Musa, ud'u lana rabbak yubayyil lana ma launuha. Musa, make a dua to your Rabb. It's not to our Allah, Rabbak, your God. It's kind of like it's not their God. It's individualism here. You, you are there and you are here. But they asked him, ask him, what color is the cow? Musa alayhi salam about the fume up, like what it is, just go slaughter a cow. Then Musa alayhi salam made the dua, Allah reveals unto him, قال, Musa alayhi salam says, إنه, i.e. Allah says, إنها بقرة صفراء فاقع لونها تسر الناظرين. So this cow here, now the, you see the circle now is getting narrow. At the beginning it was a cow, any cow. And then after that, now it's not an old cow, and it's not a young cow, it's a middle-aged cow. See how the narrow now is going? So we're going to exclude the old and the young. And then they ask for another evidence. He said, now it has to be yellow, and not only yellow, that type of yellow that when you look at it, it pleases you. Now, would they slaughter it? They still argued. They said, Ya Musa, ud'u lana rabbaka yubayyil lana ma hiya. Allah, the children of Israel are really funny. They said, Ya Musa, make a dua to your Rabb, to your Lord, to make it clear to us what it is. Things are really messed up for us. We can't see through. Subhanallah, since when humans cannot tell what a cow is, what a middle-aged yellow cow is, do you need like an extra dua to make know what it is? Well, Musa alayhi salam, looked at them and they say, Ya Musa, Allah wa inna insha'Allah lamuhtadun. And as soon as we get this answer from you, insha'Allah we will be guided to find the right cow that you want us to slaughter. Musa alayhi salam looks at them, makes dua to Allah. Allah tells him, innahu yaqul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, innaha baqaratun. It is a cow. La dhalulun tuthirul ard. I.e. it's not used to pluff the earth. You can't use it to dig the earth. وَلَا تَسْقِ الْحَرْثِ And also it's a cow that you do not use to bring water or to water your crops with. مُسَلَّمَةٌ لَا شِيَةَ فِيهَا i.e. completely no problems at all. It doesn't have any defects and there is not a thing on it. It's completely yellow, not even the smallest spot. They said to Musa a.s. قَالُوا الْآنَ جِئْتَ بِالْحَقِّ Now you have brought the truth. Subhanallah. Musa, who is Musa? He helped, and they saw how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguarded the children of Israel from Fir'aun. They saw how Allah opened the sea in front of their eyes. They saw how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nourishes them with al-man and al-salwa, by the roasted meat and this beautiful, sweet, honey-like dessert. They saw all these things and more of this miracle, and still they not convinced that Allah could do these things. Subhanallah, فَذَبَحُوهَا And they slaughtered it. وَمَا كَادُوا يَفْعَلُونَ Meaning, they did the act of slaughtering it, and if they could have found the slightest excuse not to slaughter it, they would have done that, i.e. not slaughtering it. And then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قَتَلْتُمْ نَفْسًا Now we go back to the original thing when they killed the soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَدَّارَأْتُمْ فِيهَا فَتَدَفَعْتُمُهَا i.e. you keep accusing this and they accuse that, so there is nothing of tangible. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاللَّهُ مُخْرِجٌ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْتُمُونَ And Allah is about to reveal what you people concealing. So what it is that the children of Israel were hiding and concealing? Was it the murder? No, it was not the murder. Now watch what he says the next thing. فَقُلْنَ ضَرِبُوهُ بِبَعْضِهَا Allah says, take a part of the dead cow and hit the dead person. 
And then as soon as they hit him, the man, كذلك يحيي الله الموتى. And as soon as they took a dead part of the cow and they hit the dead person, that is a dead piece hitting a dead corpse. And the man stood up and he pointed to the killer. He said, he killed me. And then he fell again and died. This is the story as you find it in all the books of Tafsir and everything. Now the question that asks itself, what it is in the story for us to learn from it? What should we learn from this story of Al-Baqarah, the cow? Now here is the secret why the Jews didn't want to slaughter the cow. When they were in Egypt, there was a goddess called Hather, which is the cow goddess in Egypt. And it is one of the most goddesses of ancient Egypt. She was known as the great one of many names. She was part of love, risk, to provide their sustenance, health, victory. The children of Israel used to worship it with the Egyptians. This is why after they escaped Pharaoh, when they passed on the other land, on their way to Palestine, to Sinai, they saw a group of people worshiping an idol. And they say, Ya Musa, اجعل لنا آلية كما لهم آلية يا موسى give us a god to worship an idol that like the other people who have a god موسى عليه السلام got angry but in any case when موسى عليه السلام went to speak to Allah سبحانه وتعالى in the second meeting what happened السامري took the gold that the children of Israel had stolen from the Egyptians and he carved it into a calf into the hather of the Egypt because they wanted to pray to that goddess to bless them and to help them and to support them and everything. They went back to the worship of the idol. This is why when they killed the man, Allah wanted them to kill the goddess that was in their heart. This is why Allah said to them, slaughter a cow. And the children were all argumentative. They didn't want to submit to the command of Allah to slaughter the cow because they were veneer in their heart. They worshipped the Hather, the goddess of Egypt, the cow. It was extremely difficult for them to do what? To slaughter the goddess that they had in the heart. That is why they kept going to Musa back and forth. Tell your God what it is. Come on, it's a cow. It was even difficult for them to slaughter a cow. Let me give you an example. If a Hindu embraces Islam, and then to really make him believe that Islam and he's a real Muslim, we give him a knife and we give him a cow and we go, go slaughter a cow. He has been worshiping this guy for 40 years. Do you think it's going to be very easy for him to slaughter that cow? It's going to take him forever. Look at yourself. If you have this sabha or the thing you hold in your hand and you count subhanallah, subhanallah. People put it on the mushaf, people on the things. Why? It's too difficult for them to put it on the floor because it becomes more important. It has like this emotional and religious value. To the children of Israel, the cow were their emotional. It was their emotional value. They could not slaughter it because the kufr and the shirk in their heart was still there. That's why they kept telling to Musa, ask your Rabb, your God, Rabbuk, your, 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 your. It never was ours because as soon as they had the opportunity, they showed which one was their God, the God cow Hather. H-A-T-H-O-R. Go read about it on the internet. You'll be surprised. Now, that is what happened then. So why did Allah tell us that now? Because Allah says to us, Muslims, at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, I said, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين. If you want to be a pious person, if you want to be a person of taqwa, you must slaughter the cow in your heart. My question to you now, what is the cow that is in your heart? Perhaps you are using usury, riba, haram, and it's so dear to your heart that you are ready to stop everything except that. Anything that is important to you in your heart, that you love in your heart, that you cannot let go and is a disobedience that is your cow. For example... I'll take a man, for example, he is biased in everything and he does everything, but he goes on the internet and watches haram things. That's his cow. That haram thing is his cow. And you, my sister, perhaps you are a good Muslim in every angle, mashallah. But when it comes to your husband taking a second wife, you erect an atomic defense bar. That's it. No one's going to get there. I'm not taking it. That is your cow. 
And you, my sister, perhaps you're not wearing the hijab properly. That is your cow. And you, my brother, perhaps you don't wake up for Fajr on time. That is your cow. And you, my brother, who's running after the dunya, you work in mini cab and you pick up people in the, at midnight from bars and you take them home, drunk and fornication in your car. So you are good Muslim, but you cannot let that go. That is your cow. And each one of us has got a cow. Some of our cows are huge. Some of the cows are little. Some are calves. And some of us don't have cows. So that story in the Quran, Allah is telling us, what is the cow in your heart? If you want to benefit from the Quran, you must, you must slaughter the cow that is in your heart. Once you slaughter it, then you will benefit from the rest of the Quran. If you don't, Al-Quran will have trouble getting you back to safety because you are objecting its teachings. So my dear brothers and my sisters, here's my question. How many cows do you have in your heart? How many cows? Food for thought. And Allah knows more. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad. I pray to Allah that we will all slaughter our cows and get rid of them. Surah Al-Baqarah is about the cow in your heart. When you slaughter it, Quran will become extremely beautiful, as pure as water, and as sweet as honey, and as lifting as the air itself. Slaughter the cow, and let's move forward. This is your brother Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa, and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all, help us slaughter the cow, and until my next pep talk, have a wonderful day in the Rahmah of Allah. To join my pep talk group, it's 078 76 40 or email me at islampeptalk at gmail.com. One word. بارك الله فيكم and السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته